A very good afternoon to all of you. Voiding dysfunction in women is actually a complex and poorly understood problem. When it comes to urinary problem in women, everywhere you will find lectures, seminars, discussion going on about urinary incontinence. While when it comes to voiding dysfunction, it is a topic which is not much discussed and debated in women. However, do not think that it is a problem which is rare. It is a common problem. If you run a urogynecology OPD, you would have realized that there are a lot of women who have voiding dysfunction and are really trouble with the same. Not only because of the symptoms, but more because of the lack of correct diagnosis, which mostly leads to multiple unnecessary interventions without any relief to the problem or the symptom she is going through. So today, our aim will be to understand voiding dysfunctions in women in a very simple way in next 15 minutes or so. Let's start the story with lower urinary tract symptoms. Lower urinary tract, which means the bladder and the urethra, can present with only two kinds of symptoms, either problems related to storing urine or problems during voiding the bladder. Now as 99% of the times the lower urinary tract is functioning as in storage organ. So this symptom which is related to problems with storage are more common and are known as incontinence. Only 1% of the time in the day the patient needs to empty her bladder and problems during this phase, during the voiding phase, they occur uncommonly only in 1% of the time in a day. But trust me, these are the problems which are very, very distressing to the lady. Now talking specifically of these voiding dysfunction, you must understand that this is not just one issue. It is actually an entire spectrum which starts with minimal problem like poor urinary stream and if not recognized and not treated, it can present as an acute emergency in the form of urinary retention. Again and again we keep on saying that voiding dysfunction in women are not so common as compared to men. And that is because of two important factors. Number one, the short length of urethra in women and also because the absence of prostrate gland. However, just assumption is not enough. Let's look into the studies which were done in various parts of the world and try to find out what is the prevalence of this problem among women. So this is epi LUTS study, epidemiological study on lower urinary tract symptoms which was conducted in US, UK and Sweden. Around 16,000 women who were more than 40 years of age participated in the study and what they saw, you can see the graph here, that though storage symptoms were much more common but it did not mean that voiding symptoms were negligible. Around 40% of women complained of terminal dribbling. Feeling of incomplete voiding was reported by 27% of women, while 20% said that they had a weak stream. Similar multicentric study from Canada, Germany, Italy, UK and Sweden reported almost the same results. In their population overall, 66.6% .6 women complained of some form of lower urinary tract symptoms. 60% were storage and 20% were voiding. Around 10% symptoms had overlaps of both storage as well as voiding problems. Now what I am showing you here is a very interesting study. It was published in Nature in the year 2020. What they try to report here is the prevalence and amount of bother of lower urinary tract symptoms comparing men versus women. And what this table shows here that definitely the amount or the prevalence 
of voiding symptoms was much higher among men, which is expected. However, this does not mean that the amount of bother was also more among men. This table shows that the amount of bother either was equal in women as was in men or in some instances they were much more bothered with voiding these functions than men. Now with these two understanding first that voiding symptoms are not that uncommon in women. Number two they are very very bothersome. Let's try to understand what actually causes it. First question is what is normal? To have normal voiding bladder must contract and urethra must relax. Simple it is. And these two contrasting acts must happen simultaneously. The causes of voiding dysfunction can be only two. Either the bladder fails to contract or the urethra fails to relax. Though it looks so simple, making a correct clinical diagnosis can be challenging as many a times these voiding symptoms coexist with storage symptoms. Not talking of the situation where bladder fails to contract, this condition is known as detrusor underactivity or DU in simple. Now, it can be of two types, either primary idiopathic, which is mostly seen with aging, or it can be secondary, which can further be subdivided into neurogenic cause or myogenic. The common examples of neurogenic detrusor hypoactivity or underactivity are cerebrovascular accidents, spinal cord injury, space occupying tumors, diabetes, herniation of vertebral disc and even pelvic nerve injury which can be either iatrogenic or traumatic. The myogenic causes are aging and a very important cause APBO that is acute prolonged bladder over distension. Even one episode of this kind of acute prolonged bladder obstruction is important and can affect the muscle fibers of the bladder negatively. Menopause, diabetes, immobility, recurrent urinary tract infections, some drugs and even psychological events can lead to myogenic damage to bladder muscles which can cause hypotonia of bladder. In the second group of causes, the urethra fails to relax. This condition is known as bladder outlet obstruction or BOO. It can be anatomical or functional. Anatomical obstruction can be because of prolapse and especially cystocele, fibroids, usually posterior wall which are retroverting the uterus. It can be post mid urethral sling if the sling is tight. The other causes include urethral stricture, urethral diverticulum, prolonged inflammation and even prolonged catheterization which makes the urethra like lead pipe. Any other mass other than fibroid like ovarian mass or other any other pelvic mass can produce anatomical obstruction of bladder neck. The functional reasons for bladder neck obstruction are either dysfunctional voiding or dyssynergia of sphincter and detrusor muscles. Fowler syndrome which is seen in young women suffering with PCO can also be seen rarely. For making a diagnosis, having understood the causes, we will systematically go through the procedure of history taking, examination and then investigation. In history, we have to ask about voiding symptoms, but as many a times, around 10% of the times, storing dysfunction do coexist, we have to keep that also in our mind. So here is the list of what symptoms of voiding dysfunction we are supposed to ask while taking the history. After listening to the patient, you have to give her symptom a name, like whether it is hesitancy, weak stream, intermittency, straining to void, sprain, split stream, or incomplete voiding. Patient may also describe this as a need to immediately revoid. She can even have position dependent micturition or post micturition dribbling of urine. 
keep it in mind that these symptoms may be coexistent with other storage symptoms. Never ignore these symptoms because these are important and a cause of lot of distress to the lady. A thorough examination and documentation of her gait, her hand grip about any abdominal scars or suprapubic fullness and if it is there whether it is tender or not which actually might be a full bladder you have to note it down. In pelvic examination you have to look for any signs of vaginal atrophy, infection, pelvic organ prolapse especially the cystocele part, any pelvic mass, urethral tenderness, urethral diverticulum, any scarring which might be because of the earlier surgery, fecal infection, anal sphincter tone and you have to elicit some reflexes like anal wink, clitoral reflex which I always tell to do and also check for perineal sensation to check for integrity of sensory nerve in that area. For investigation, rule out urinary infection. It might be the cause or the effect of voiding dysfunction. Ultrasound needs to be done to check for post void residual urine and look for kidneys also to rule out back pressure changes if any. Look for pelvic masses like a big fibroid or an ovarian tumor. Bladder diary has its role definitely and in few cases if you are thinking of urethral pathologies even urethrocystoscopy can be helpful. In the urodynamic testing in these women urophlometry maybe is the most important study to support it pressure flow studies are required. The other parameters which should be noted down during cystometry are when does the patient had the desire to void the entire bladder capacity and also the pressure in the detrosor. For treatment now let's come back to the basics again. Now if we have found out that because of any reason it is detrosor under activity the treatment should target either increasing bladder contractility or decreasing outflow resistance or a mix of both that. We have multiple options. Behavior therapy tops the list. We can use some drugs like bethanocol or diastigmine. Intravesical electrical stimulation is also one mode of therapy. If nothing is working, clean intermittent self-catheterization we should try. Other recommended therapies are nerve modulation, sacral nerve modulation become the, being the most important one. Then if nothing works, we have to do detrusor myoplasty. If the cause lies in failure of urethra to relax, treatment depends on whether it is an anatomical obstruction or a functional one. Anatomical obstruction, you know, if it is a pelvic organ prolapse, you have to repair it. If it is fibroid, you have to remove it. If it is a tight sling, you can either manage it conservatively or even cut the tape in severe cases. To treat functional obstructions, the options we have, number one is pelvic floor relaxation combined with biofeedback or we can use some drugs also like alpha blockers. Dyssynergic sphincter is treated with clean intermittent catheterization plus minus Botox in the bladder. If facilities are available, even sacral nerve modulation shows good results in this group of patients. Now after all this, if you are looking for one message from my side, I would suggest or I would highly recommend that all of you listen to your patient carefully because it is not a simple problem patient would have shown to many places without any satisfactory results she might have undergone various interventions but her symptoms would have been persisting so be attentive try to listen to her and most of the times even just listening to her complaints carefully you can put it in one of the symptoms of voiding dysfunction and the road becomes much more easy from there. However, you must understand that a complete cure might not be possible in every woman who is suffering with voiding dysfunction. Thus, just listening, understanding and relieving her symptoms and minimizing the long-term sequelae 
associated with it should be our goal. Thank you.